Hey guys, I'm Kadroth, and today I want to be going over with you guys Mystic Codes. It's a subject I've talked about in plenty of other videos prior to this point, but I feel like no one's ever really gone over with you guys sort of when to use them, you know, what's appropriate for them, where they're good at, what their strengths are, as well as, again, you know, your leveling priority for them and maybe, you know, when to buy them from the Rare Prism shop, those sorts of things. So let's go ahead and get right in as I start talking about these. The first one to start off with here is our OG Mystic Code, Mystic Code Chaldea. This one is a very strong Mystic Code. I think a lot of people look down upon it now because it's just the original one, but it has a lot of good features to it. Not only does it have a very nice heal on a low cooldown, but it also ends up having a powerful steroid that doesn't care what card type we're bringing to the table. So it works on all of our units regardless. It doesn't have to be just an NP either. Since it's attack up, we could use this for critting and carding scenarios. That's so really, really good. And then on top of that, it does have the one turn evasion. So for that reason alone, I find this Mystic Code to just be invaluable. It's one of the best Mystic Codes we get and you get it to begin the game. So should it be a priority for you to level? Yes, it should actually be the very first thing that you guys level up Mystic Code wise in the game. In fact, most people will assume as you move throughout the game that you already have this Mystic Code at rank 10 because it is so easy to level. It is the easiest one in the game to level in terms of experience requirement. So that's why, again, because you start out with it, people will just assume you have it done. Next one up here is gonna be Chaldea Combat Uniform as it's known, but we typically refer to it as Plug Suit. So if you see a lot of other players talking about it like that for you new people, again, this is what we're referring to as the Plug Suit. And it's because it looks again like the Plug Suits used in uh, Evangelion and those sorts of things. But again, Plug Suit is often referred to as the most powerful offensive buff in the game. And that kind of is a little bit of tongue in cheek. You might be wondering what people are meaning when they say that, but they're basically referring to the fact that it has order change. The third skill here is fantastic as it allows you guys to basically change your frontline unit with your backline. So you can pick and choose who to bring in. You can bring in another unit for offensive firepower you could bring in a support unit to help out with charge or protection and healing or you could even end up bringing in some sort of like tank or taunter someone to maybe take the damage for the team a sacrificial unit if you will and that is what makes this mystic code just one of the best in the game bar none but the reason here that it's really referred to as one of the most powerful is because not only do you get here in the first skill a party-wide card uncaring steroid here for 30% attack up, we also end up getting, again, that order change that allows you to bring in another unit. So you start thinking about that from an offensive standpoint and you get not only your typical steroid, but also the firepower or again, utility that another unit is bringing to the table. So it really allows you to amplify that. Any one unit in the game that might be, quote, stronger than Plug Suit can be used with Plug Suit and other units in tandem with its offensive buff to just make you scale ridiculously well. But again, I find that Plug Suit is so useful due to its ability to allow you to manipulate the party. That is such a strong ability and it's hard to get without killing somebody with either a sacrificial ability or again, perhaps a scapegoat-like ability to make somebody else get hit. So Plug Suit is given to you via a quest in the Chaldea Gates, very easy to acquire, but it is one of the longer mystic codes when it comes to time taking to level it up. I highly recommend not leveling it up. And that sounds very odd, but the reason for that is because leveling it is just totally unnecessary. It will level naturally as you're forced to use it for certain quests, for certain fights, because you realize that you need the ability to rotate through the party. You need the ability to bring somebody else in to help it out for you to clear efficiently or quickly, depending on your strategy. And that is why you don't need to focus on Chaldea Combat Uniform to finish it off. Plug Suit is just naturally going to level on its own. On top of that, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Gander here as it is a very useful ability. This is actually the survivability that 
plug suit has in it. It doesn't seem like much at first because it's just a one turn stun, but that one turn of stunning can prevent an enemy from getting off an NP. It can delay it until your cooldowns are ready to handle it. Or again, it could just buy you time to pull off some other thing that you're trying to set up maybe offensively. So Gander, while it's only delaying the inevitable, can still somehow save you in a lot of cases. And this is something that actually the newer plug suit that we get later down the line after Tunguska doesn't have. And that's probably the one weakness of that other mystic code. So next up is going to be the Mages Association uniform. It's often referred to either as Mages or even a little bit colloquially as Hogwarts MC. And the reason for that is because of its ability. So if you look here, it has, again, a party-wide heal. It's not a huge one, but it can be nice. It's probably the best thing that does scale with this Mystic Code. Otherwise, you also get Spiritron Transfer, which is the largest amount of MP gain that we can get from a Mystic Code. Sorry, not MP gain, MP gauge. So again, 20% charge there is really, really nice to have. And then you also get the Command Shuffle here, which is its unique ability and what really sets it apart. This is gonna allow you to deal a new hand of Command Cards to yourself. This will also restart the three-turn cadence for whenever you're using Command Cards. If you want a greater explanation on that, go watch my video on Command Cards where I explain kind of the ins and outs of them and how they work. But again, Command Shuffle here is a very powerful ability in the right hands in the right situation. And that's something I actually wanted to talk about here with mages is that it is a very good mystic code early on in an account's life where maybe you don't have a whole lot of support units that give you a lot of charge. Maybe you don't have a lot of starting charge craft essences. So having the ability to charge yourself 20% and get to that NP faster is very useful. And then having the ability to shuffle cards and get the cards that you want, that you need, is definitely gonna help you. Now there's no guarantee you get what you want, but it's giving you another chance. So maybe you're like, oh man, I've gotta have my NP next turn, but I have no arts cards. That's where you're gonna sit there and go, hey, haha, command shuffle and I get another crack to maybe get the arts cards that I need. Again, we do actually see another unit in the game, Arturia Bunny having this. She then, after her upgrade, has the ability to restrict it to one unit, or sorry, to two units, so you can exclude one of the three units from that deck that's gonna get dealt to you. So that does help things out, but even then there's still no guarantee. That's probably what I would expect a newer, more recent version of a Mage's Association upgrade to look like if we do get one down the line for the Lost Belt singularities and such, that maybe we end up with something that has still the command shuffle, but also the ability to remove one of the other units from the equation, thus restricting it to only two and giving you a higher chance of getting what you need. That would be a nice upgrade to the ability and make it a decent thing to have. But still, I really like it because not only do you get healing, you get the charge, you get the card shuffle. This is a very good mystic code for carding. Again, getting to that noble phantasm faster, getting everything you need. It, just like Plug Suit, is going to be locked behind a quest in Chaldea Gate, but it should be available to you guys right after completing Fuyuki and getting in there, so it should be pretty nice. It is worthy of noting, though, too, that this Mystic Code does, just like Plug Suit, take a while to level up, so it doesn't need to be your focus, especially, because again, there's not a whole lot here that scales off of it, basically just cooldowns and the heal, so not the hugest of deals if you can't level this one up right away. And now for the last of the Chaldea Gate Mystic Codes, this is the Atlas Academy uniform. So Atlas, as it's known, is a very good Mystic Code for challenge content, and that should be pretty apparent just looking here at the first skill, as you go, oh, hey, we get invincibility for one servant for one turn. That's nice, that's solid. One turn durations means you're good for that turn, rather than the times durations that we see on other Mystic Codes that can maybe be overpowered by an enemy that's overly focusing on our unit or again, spamming AOE attacks. So there is some advantage to having a turn duration versus a times duration. Also, we get Reign of Isis here on the second ability that's giving us a total debuff cleanse. This is really nice. It's one of the best parts about it, that if we get into a fight that is very hairy, very ailment focused, very debilitative, and trying to prevent us from doing what we want to do by locking us down, by immobilizing us in some way, charm, stun, sleep, yada, yada, yada. Reign of Isis here can take care of that for us and get that unit back online when we need them to be most. 
And then the third skill here, Eye of Medjed, is another very interesting one that's unique to Atlas Academy because it allows us to reduce one servant's cooldowns by two. This is strong in the right circumstances. It allows us to get to maybe our protective cooldowns faster or our charge skills faster after having already used them. Maybe we're going, oh no, there's an enemy NP incoming and this is gonna allow us to get our skills back ahead of that sort of timing cadence there. This could be another really strong one. It's also worthy of noting that Atlas has come into a new realm of usage now on the JP server after the Koyan Skaya and Oberon release because the Koyan Skaya situation now and that system is how it basically allows you to reduce the cooldowns of your units. It's very good for buster units so we've started to see Atlas Academy get used in tandem with some of those units in order to allow units that have greater than six turn cooldowns the ability to get back to another usage of their skill allowing them to double up so this is where atlas academy comes in because it's the only other way outside of just kind of throwing the comp off by including another unit that has no business being in there of reducing your cooldowns a little bit more so atlas has come into some new uses here of late who knows what an upgraded version of it could look like. If you think you know, go ahead and tell me in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys think about that sort of stuff. But again, this one is a rather long one to level up just like Plug Suit and Mages, so you don't need to focus. It also doesn't really scale that well because you're only getting the cooldowns off of all of these abilities. So again, nothing you need to prioritize. In fact, this one might be the last Mystic Code in the game that you should level because you will be forced to use it at times, but it gets nothing off of leveling up, basically. Next up here is gonna be Anniversary Blonde. Now this is the first of our Da Vinci Workshop Rare Prism Shop Mystic Codes. And the reason for that is because it was launched during the 5 million downloads campaign. That has already come and gone on both JP and NA servers. So now it just resides in the workshop. So you guys have to get Rare Prisms if you want to unlock it. With that being said, Annie Blonde is still my first recommendation for what Mystic Code you should unlock, but it does have a more recent challenger that is certainly uh, worthy of your attention. So it's not as, you know, guaranteeable first pick as maybe I have said before. But just looking at this here, going over it with you guys, I'll show you why it is so strong. So its first skill here is a buster up for one turn for one servant, and it is 60% scaling. That is the most out of any of the single target steroids that we have. It's tied with a couple of the other Mystic Codes, but many other single target steroid Mystic Codes only go up to 50%. So that right there is already an edge to Anniversary Blonde in terms of its offensive capability. Its second skill is a very powerful crit star bomb scaling up to 20 stars, which can make it really nice for crit carding comps, especially if we're soloing or something like that, and we just need a gigantic influx of stars at the right time to secure our crits. So while it doesn't have crit damage or something like that on it, it does at least give you the ability to secure that crit a lot better. And it is, even if you can't secure it, going to give you enough of an influx there that it should be able to secure you some, if not all. So this is one of the big uses for this is the crit star bomb on it, but it isn't the only mystic code that you guys will see that has a crit star bomb. And then its third skill, and this is actually its unique aspect, is Knight's Oath. This is a Guts. It's the only Guts on a Mystic Code in the game. And this is why I actually tell you guys a lot of the times to pick it up to begin with, is there are the occasional fights that we run into that have stuff like Invuln Pierce. It can be very annoying, especially for a newer account that maybe doesn't have the capability of dealing with things other than outside of the occasional dodge and Invuln. Well, if you run into one of those scenarios and the enemy has that and they're gonna kill you, boom, there you go, you have guts. It's something that won't actually be pierced by that. You also see a couple of fights now moving forward that start to have defensive buff removal gimmicks on them. And the good part about guts is it's not considered a defensive skill. It's instead considered a restorative skill. It's basically a heal. So it doesn't get removed by something that's only removing defensive stuff. The downside to this is, while it is uh, powerful, especially at rank 10 with a 4,000 HP revival, it's only one turn, so you really gotta know when the hit is coming. That is probably gonna be the trickiest part about using this, but overall, I think between the third and second skills alone, there are enough uses for it to warrant its early purchase, 
as well as the mana burst just being naturally strong for a lot of units. So again, it's actually not as hard to level as the three mentioned before it that were the Chaldea Gate quests. This one's still relatively easy to level and thus it can be an early game priority for you, especially if it's something that you managed to get out of the Rare Prism shop early for your account. So I would highly recommend leveling this. That way you get it up and online, you get the cooldowns lowered, you get the maximum stars as well as the offensive steroid there, and it should be good and high priority for you. So our next Rare Prism Shop Mystic Code here is going to be Royal Brand. Royal Brand is a very nice Mystic Code, but it used to be basically a lot nicer. So did it get worse? Not really, just sort of what happened is the game around it evolved. So again, you can use the five Rare Prisms if you want to unlock it, but it shouldn't be your priority because it's kind of begun to get outpaced by sort of its competition. What do I mean by that? Well, let's break it down for you. So the first skill here is a one turn quick performance stair rate of 50%, so not as good as any blonde right there, but still powerful. Early in the game's history, this was one of the best ways to buff your quick units because there wasn't a whole lot of support you could give to them. Now though, Scotty has come out, and who knows what the future might bring on JP with another support down the line, but certainly we can look at this and say, well, the thing that Scotty already brings to the table is a 50% quick steroid. And if you're running double of her, you're getting 100% there. Putting more quick performance on top of that, while it can be nice, isn't going to scale as well as bringing a different buff type. And that sort of gets into how buff stacking works. I highly recommend checking my video on that if you need an explanation, but basically it's gonna be additive rather than multiplicative here. So still good, but obviously not as good since that's the primary form of steroid that uh, Scotty brings to the table already for quick systems. Our second skill here is the ability to increase one servant's critical star absorption for one turn. Now, this can be good, but it's not very high in that regard. In fact, you'll see some of the other Mystic Codes that have this down the line have much greater percentages to allow this to occur. But still, I think my biggest issue with this here on Iron Will is the fact that it is giving you crit star absorption in a system that typically generates a whole lot of stars. We sometimes and pretty regularly can generate so many stars, we don't necessarily care who gets the allocation of them and such as a result of this I would have rather have seen crit damage rather than crit star absorption and you're gonna see one of its competitors down the line here actually ends up having that and that's sort of again why I begin to knock royal brand a little bit here as being a bit dated and then our third skill here and this is actually again the sort of go-to for it is it has sure hit on it this is very nice. It's a good skill that's going to allow you to pierce any sort of dodge, but it won't allow you to pierce invuln still, so not quite as good down the stretch, but still can be useful in the right situation. So Royal Brand could be worthy of your attention for buying it. Again, like I said, who knows what JP will do with possibly another quick support looming in the future. But again, I think looking at this, we could say that Royal Brand is not the greatest thing to buy, and thus it shouldn't be a high priority for you in terms of Mystic Codes to get out of the shop. Again, if you want to be a collector, definitely get it eventually, because you can level it up relatively easy, but I wouldn't make this even close to my first choice. The next one up here is going to be the Brilliant Summer Mystic Code. Unfortunately, this one is unattainable at this point, and that's pretty much par for the course with all of our Summer Mystic Codes going forward. So again, it's a decent Mystic Code purely because of its kit. It does level very easily, but good luck getting it if you don't already have it because it's from the original summer event. So hopefully down the line, maybe they'll run another one of those like three in one events where they allow us to reacquire it and maybe as well as other summer goodies like the summer three Mystic Code. But again, we'll see. So for our first skill here, we get party wide quick performance for one turn. Just to sort of talk about this, this is a card specific party wide buff. So to put this into perspective, for this to be worthy in terms of damage output, you need to be in ping the same turn with two or more units that have this card type. So that's why these end up getting a little bit of a knock from me because they're very restrictive in terms of their usefulness. Instead, where we end up seeing them get used is just for one unit, maybe to get a little bit of firepower, which sort of defeats the purpose a little bit here. But 
We'll see, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So for the second skill here, we get Invincibility Pierce. So right when I was talking about Royal Brand, this one has Invuln Pierce. So this one's a lot better. It's the only Mystic Code in the game that does have it at the current moment. So that at least makes this somewhat useful. Unfortunately, we can't acquire it anymore. The third skill though, allows us to have a targeted heal and NP gauge charge right here. And that is what makes this useful. It's you sit here and you go, man, if only I had something that gave me 10% charge as well as increased damage a little bit. And that's sort of the use that we find some of these mystic codes in. So rather than doing this, I feel like if they ever wanted to make these a little bit more useful, the thing that they could do is they could make it one time two turns or something like that. And that would allow you to have multiple people using it where one unit uses it on turn two and another unit uses it on turn three. It'll provide you a little bit more wiggle room and make it a lot more usable to other people, but that's if they wanted to eventually give us another mystic code like this. Either way, I think this is a fairly good one. It's cheap to level. It just is unfortunately no longer able to be acquired. Next up here is Memories of Lunar Mare. This is a mystic code that came from the original Fate Stella release campaign, which happened a little bit later on the JP servers, but happened right at launch on the NA server. So for a long time, players did not have the access to this mystic code unless they were a day one player. Very recently here, it just got added back to the Da Vinci shop for NA. It was actually long overdue, but the devs had missed it because they goofed. I'll give them a little bit of shit for that, but it is a five rare prism cost. Now, should this be a priority for you to buy? No, I actually don't think it should because I think sort of your top targets are gonna lie elsewhere. But as far as arts mystic codes go, I don't think it's terrible. I think this actually probably should be the first one you buy unless they ever give us another way to get the summer three mystic code, which I find just absolutely outperforms it just about every way but we'll see as I talk about it right here. Again, it's not a hard mystic code to level, so it could be a decent one for you to work on, especially if you have an arts heavily focused account at the moment. But just looking at this, you get a single target, one turn art steroid of 50%. Again, not quite as good there as any blonde, but still it's nice. Our second skill here is the increase to the crit star generation rate for one turn, which can be good for arts units as again, they're not necessarily known for their star generation, so this might help tip the scales in your favor for a good turn with the right cards. Maybe that's the turn that you got a bunch of your quick cards, and you can say, hey, look, now I can generate some stars for the next turn in, an, in a system that's not normally going to do this. And then our third skill here gives us buff block status for one time. This is its unique ability here, as again, it is very nice to have in the right set of circumstances. It's not turn limited, so you can put it on an enemy and until they use the ability, it will not be consumed, which is very nice for us because it doesn't allow us to have to sit there and try to predict the turn that the enemy is going to use it on. So you could use it early and hope that it catches the right thing, but remember, due to the way that certain gimmicks work in certain fights, you might want to wait until an enemy uses something else first before you use this. It's just going to depend on what your goal is, but this can be very nice at sort of taking away an enemy's ability to have some sort of annoying effect, be it Invuln Pierce, be it Dodge, you name it. This can be a good counter to that. So that is one of the reasons why I still don't think that this Mystic Code is bad. It can certainly be useful to you in the right set of circumstances. Here we have Memoria of the Far Side of the Moon. Now this one is going to be our party-wide version, our AOE version of the prior one here. Again, it's another rare prism shop acquisition for 5 RP. This one to me should be even further back than Lunar Mari, but it sort of depends on what you're doing. It's not a bad mystic code, but again, it definitely doesn't need to be high up on your list. So looking at this again, remember, this is a card specific party wide buff. So remember for this to be worth it over say Lunar Mare there, you would have needed two units in peeing on the same turn so that it outpaces it at 60% to the 50%. But still, this can definitely be useful. It just, what this Mystic Code lacks, it doesn't have the charge that say Brilliant Summer had where you could say, hey, I need a little bit of charge and a little bit of damage. So when you take this, you're just naturally probably shafting your damage because there's no other advantage in that sense. But there's still some other reasons to use it. 
like the second ability here, which has debuff immunity. Again, it's one time, it's not turn restrictive, so we can put this on ourselves and hope that it blocks us out from any sort of nasty thing, uh, any sort of cocktail that the boss is gonna try to throw on you. So that can at least work to your advantage. You don't necessarily have to land it on the right turn and predict when the enemy is gonna use it. You can kind of set it and forget it and get it back on cooldown. So that is one of the nicer aspects to it. And then our third skill here, downslide, is also going to drain one enemy's gauge by one tick. This can be very useful in stall situations, so that's sort of why I kind of find this one to be not that bad of a mystic code. We throw this in maybe in a full-blown art stall comp, and hey, we can find some uses for it. We get an extra drain. So maybe if we're looking at Waver, Tamamo, Vlad, any of those types of units, your rail that have sort of a vampirism or ability to drain their enemies. This can work really well in tandem with him, giving you another drain on top of it, one that you can choose when it happens when you need it most. So again, this is why I think Far Side of the Moon is worthy of your attention, but maybe not necessarily something you have to prioritize. Next up is gonna be Fragment of Year 2004, AKA Frags of 2004, or just Fragments. Again, this is a fantastic Mystic Code. It is available to you guys now in the Rare Prism Shop for five Rare Prisms. Fragments is arguably the challenger for what should be purchased first alongside any blonde if we're looking at this. So depending on what sort of group you fall into, you may prefer Fragments over any blonde. And why is that? So let's go through it here with you guys. So just to talk about this, it has NP damage up for one turn. This is nice because again, we don't care about the card types. So this works with kind of everyone, even though it is restricted to NPs, unlike the OG Mystic Code that just has attack up. It is a 50% though, so it is nice, even though it's not as nice as say in any blonde in terms of raw power. But remember, NP damage is at least somewhat rare, so it does scale well. And also don't forget, people like Oberon can now enhance NP damage. So then as we get to the second skill here, we look at code U and it's allowing us to increase the critical star absorption of our buster cards for one turn. Remember how I talked about the crit star absorption skill on that quick mystic code? Well, look at this, you get 5,000 to 10,000. This is much, 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 much greater and it's gonna basically secure the crit stars go to that card. And this is also really nice for units like, say, Jolter or something like that, that are an Avenger that have a really low star weight, or again, Berserkers as well, because this is actually going to allow them to actually be able to soak the stars when they need it. Again, it is restricted to our Buster card, but that does mean that we get the advantage of hitting very hard with it. So it's still a very good use as long as you time it well. And then we get to Code H, and this is actually one of the bigger deals for Fragments. It might not look like much at first, but when you look at it, it's a 50% NP gain increase for one turn. And that's where we see Fragments getting a lot of use is in looping scenarios. Or again, just someone trying to get back to another NP very fast. This can be a very, very useful skill for that sort of thing. So depending on what your setup is, you might prefer Fragments of Year 2004 over something like any blonde that has a lot of carding and just sort of nuking applications. This one has a bunch of looping and nuking applications. I actually prefer Fragment of the Year 2004 for Scotty setups, and that's sort of what I was talking about down the line there with some of the competitors to Royal Brand. Fragments has pretty much just now outpaced and outshined Royal Brand for working with quick units as opposed to Royal Brand just having a quick steroid, no sort of supplemental charge or anything like that. Again, I think Fragments should be higher in your priority list of things to level, especially because the NP gain might be integral to what you're trying to do. And again, it should be high up, even if it's not your first purchase for the Rare Prism Shop, it maybe should be your second. So do keep that in mind. Again, remember it could be your first depending on what your account is. And the next one is a doozy. So this is the Arctic Region Chaldea Uniform, also known as Arctic Mystic Code for short or just Lost Belt Mystic Code. For a long time, it was the only Mystic Code that we had from the Lost Belt series. And it is unlocked after the start of the Lost Belt 1 singularity. So as long as you're getting in there, it's not gonna be right there at the beginning, but it will be very quickly. Just keep that in mind that you're gonna get this. So this one's free, it's not gonna cost you rare prisms. And what Arctic is supposed to be, is it's supposed to be a improved version of the OG Mystic Code. So you guys let me know if you think it is or not. In some aspects, I will agree to you that it is, but it definitely has, in my eyes, a downside. 
So let's talk about it. On top of this, it is the hardest mystic code in the game to level. It is rivaled only by one other mystic code that is newer. It takes exorbitantly long periods of time to finish off. It is harder than even plug suit, mages, and Atlas Academy to level. And for that reason alone, it is going to take a while and not be necessarily a priority for you guys to finish off. But it does scale well, so let's talk. And you can see here our first skill is, it's basically going to be our standard heal, but it's also going to have a chance to remove defensive debuffs. So things that are gonna make your characters get hit harder, that is good, right? So we do get a little bit of a cleanse there. Our second skill is Phantasmal Reinforcement. So just like the old one had 50% attack up, now instead we get basically a cocktail that leads to 60% because it's mixed. We get 40% on the attack up, but 20% in P damage up. Not only does the scale multiplicatively, so it just even if we're just adding them together, it would have been stronger, but it scales multiplicatively within itself because it's two different buff types. So that's gonna make it even stronger due to that. On top of this, remember, NP damage scales with Oberon, so we get another nice double dip there down the line if you manage to have him. So that's why this one is very good scaling, very good for damage, and does outshine the OG in that form. The third skill here, though, is where I find a little bit of the trade-off. So, if you guys remember, the OG Mystic Code had one turn of dodge versus this one has one attack for three turns. So what's the trade-off here? Well, for starters, yeah, you still get one attack protection. So like if you're dealing with a Noble Phantasm or something like that, we're good. But the problem is it's only one attack, so it could be very easily overpowered versus the one turn. It, you're good for that turn. You don't have to worry about that. The upside is it lasts multiple turns. So if nobody hits you that turn, it's still good for later. You don't have to feel like, oh, you misused it or it was wasted. Again, though, keep in mind that there are certain things that could throw this off. Like for instance, oh, you pop it on your unit because you're worried about the NP that turn. And then another enemy moves before the enemy that was going to NP hits your unit, gets rid of the attack, and boom, now you're protected or unprotected and you get walloped by the NP. So that's why I say it's sort of a trade-off. We get a little bit more usability and less wastefulness, but we also lose the pure protection that the OG had. That's why sometimes I actually prefer OG to Arctic, depending on my circumstances. So again, I think Arctic is a very good, very powerful mystic code, but not the best solution for everything, and it definitely takes a long time to level. So I wouldn't make it your biggest of priorities. Now for this one, you guys might have remembered me talking about another Arts Mystic code that I thought was just purely better than the other two we already showed off. And that's the one I'm talking about right here, Tropical Summer, AKA the Summer 3 Mystic code. Again, this one is unfortunately not acquirable anymore on either server as both of them have had their run and rerun and it has never been put into the rare prism shop. So hopefully somewhere down the line, like I said, with Brilliant Summer, maybe they end up giving us some sort of a three in one event where we're able to get this back. But hopefully they do that. In the meantime, though, let's talk about it and why it's so strong. So again, you get Arts Performance and NP damage for one turn by 30 and 20% at rank 10. It is powerful, it's 50% you might think, but it is again for damage output going to be better because it's scaling multiplicatively within itself. This could be stronger than just 50% there. On top of that, we get Supply Water, which is sort of the same deal as the Buster card absorption, but instead it's Arts now here. And you guys can see again, 5,000 to 10,000, so much stronger. This is gonna secure that whatever unit you put this on, that their Arts cards are the ones soaking all the stars. And that is really strong for an art setup because maybe we're trying to both deal damage and refund back. And if we end up having, say, the arts cards after the NP to do so, this can be really, really good. Or maybe we haven't gotten to our NP yet, or we're sort of stuck in some sort of limbo and we're trying to get there. This is gonna allow us to secure those crits to get more MP gain to do so, or even just hit harder. And then our third skill here is safety oil. And it doesn't seem like too much at first because it's just 10% charge which could be strong, right? But then we also get buff removal resistance for one turn, and this is the only Mystic Code that has that. At rank 10, it goes to 100%, so this is going to secure that your unit that you put this on does not get any of their buffs removed on the turn that you use it. 
So it's a little bit of a uh, pick which, which use you actually need it for since it's only one turn there. You either get it for the charge or you get it for the buff removal resistance. But maybe if you're lucky, those interests will align in the same deal and you won't find that you're wasting the charge. Still, 10% charge, even if the supply water wasn't enough to get us to the NP, is going to help bail us out. It's gonna get us that extra little bit that we need to get there. And again, I think that Tropical Summer is a very easy Mystic Code to level, especially with its sort of dominant use in certain setups. It's definitely been used in a whole lot of looping, and I think it's a quality Mystic Code. But it's very unfortunate that we have no way of acquiring it at the moment. As to whether or not it should be a priority fee to level, I think certainly if you're dealing with arts looping and a lot of arts heavy comps, Tropical Summer's very good for offense, so I would try to get it up and running and get more firepower out of scaling it up. Now this next one is an intriguing one. It's Ceremonial New Year. This one has been added to the Rare Prism Shop as it's no longer acquirable from normal means, but it is actually a pretty solid Mystic Code, and I'm gonna explain why. It's not terrible to level up, and it should definitely be a decent priority for you, but it doesn't have to be any of the first ones that you level. But let me explain why. Our first skill here is gonna be NP damage for the party, and it's 35%, so it does scale better than that normal 30% party-wide that we see, as well as the fact that it's not specific to a card type, so we no longer care about it having to be you know, two of a kind in peeing on the same turn. Instead, of it, can, it can now be a buster and a quick unit, an arts and a quick unit, a buster and an arts, right? Those sorts of things are going to now be a little bit more open to us, so it's a little bit more usable in that sense. The second skill here as well is a 10% charge for your unit, as well as a critical star bomb. So this is our second mystic code that has crit star bomb in it. And that's sort of why this finds some uses in our sort of crit carding comps where maybe we need a little bit more charge to be able to get to an NP, but maybe we got to like crit down the first wave. This has already been used in multiple lottos. It could be very, very nice just in terms of hey, maybe I don't have the starting charge that I need to do what I want. Our third skill here as well is going to act as not only a upper limit increase for your health, but as well as a heal. And it can be up to 3000, so this is nice. While this Mystic Code lacks overall hard survivability that some of the other Mystic Codes have, this is definitely a good aspect to it, as it will allow you, if you end up in one of those carding scenarios, to maybe be able to get a little bit more out of it before you croak. As for making it your priority to level, like I said, can certainly be useful. Next one up here is gonna be Captain Chaldea, AKA the spacesuit mystic code. For JP players, you have no other way of reacquiring this because it hasn't been added back to the rare prism shop. For NA players, look towards January of 2023 when we will get our rerun of Saber Wars 2 and you will be able to reacquire this. This one is not that bad in terms of Mystic Code capabilities. I actually really like what it does as it gives us one turn of NP damage for 50% here. Again, so we don't care about the card type at play. It's also gonna remove any sort of offensive debuffs on us. So this could be really nice for say, annoying raids that have debilitation, or again, just annoying boss fights that are maybe trying to reduce your capability offensively against them. Our second skill as well here is going to increase critical damage for one turn by up to 50%. So while we don't have a star bomb or star absorption in this, we do at least get crit damage if we manage to have the stars. This is still nice, but again, you're gonna have to find a way of doing those other things in order to make this useful. And then our third skill here is one times evasion for three turns. The same sort of deal as the Arctic Mystic Code. This can certainly protect you, but be careful. It can be overpowered, like I said, but hey, at least it's got a hard survival. Doubly so because it, it pairs this with a nice, decent heal. So we do find that the survivability of Captain Chaldea is quite good in that regard. Now, as for leveling it again, it's not one of the hard ones to level. It's pretty standard, so this could be useful to you. And this definitely can be a little bit higher on your priority list than some of the other Mystic Codes because it does scale very nicely and is a pretty well-rounded one. But remember, there's no other way to reacquire it if you miss Saber Wars 2 on NA, so don't. 
Now I've heard multiple proposals for the name of this mystic code. Fifth true theoretical factor environment purpose Chaldea uniform is what it's listed as. We all just call it the Babylonia mystic code because that's exactly when it came to the game was during the Babylonia event. This is no longer obtainable on either server because it hasn't been added to the rare prism shop. The campaign that granted it to us has run on both servers as well. So that's the unfortunate part of this. But just looking at it, it's another card specific party wide steroid. So remember the sort of rules here, we're looking at it needing to be two or more of the same card type in peeing on the same turn for this to outweigh something like say Anniversary Blonde for comparison. But again, that's probably not where you're gonna use it too much. You're gonna use it when you need just a little bit and some of the other skills like we've talked about. Again though, the good part here is it does scale 35% rather than 30. If it were just 30, again, even two would not outshine say Anniversary Blonde offensively. But looking at our second skill here, we do get healing regeneration for three turns. This one's actually nice if we're dealing with a little bit of chip damage over time because we get the HP regen over time. So for three turns, you're gonna get up to 2000 per turn. This can be our most powerful heal on any mystic code as a result of that, but it does require you to be able to stretch it out. So if you need as much as you can right then that turn, this is not necessarily going to be good for you. And our third skill here is actually quite nice, though it is a little bit of an odd pairing. We get NP charge by 10% and then NP gen by up to 40% there, depending on the level of the Mystic Code. So again, this could be very useful for getting to your NP. Maybe we're not quite there yet, so we take the 10% charge, but we use the cards as well to, in combination with the NP gain to get there faster. The problem that I find is a lot of the times we want to use the gauge charge, you know, when we're going, okay, hey, I need it right now this turn to get to my NP versus like, okay, let's use it beforehand, maybe with some cards, because the cards might not work out and give you enough. So you could end up still short, just depending, and you maybe went, ah, crap. But still, you don't feel like it's wasted. You were that much closer for having used it but it's definitely an interesting pairing of two abilities side by side. But this is why, again, I think the Babylonian Mystic Code is all right. It actually does have some nice things here with the healing over time, the 10% charge and NP gain, and then the buster up. Maybe that's what you're going for. Maybe you say, hey, I need charge and the ability to get to an NP faster and a little bit of steroid and you go, okay, there you go. That worked perfect for me. As for making it your priority, if you're lucky enough to have it, it certainly could be there, but I wouldn't level it before something like say Annie Blonde. All right, now we're getting into some of the newer Mystic Codes that have entered the game. This is Chaldea Pathfinder, AKA the Summer 5 Mystic Code. And this one is another competitor to Royal Brand that I find outshines it in just about every way. So. The only issue here though, is that if we don't do Summer 5, we're not going to get this. JP, this is no longer obtainable until they add it to the Rare Prism Shop at some point, hopefully. Versus NA, you guys still have both of your runs of Summer 5 at this moment coming up here. So you should be able to get your hands on this in the future. Our first skill here is quick performance and NP damage for one turn each. It's 30 and 20% at max rank. So again, a combo of 50%, but because it's different buff types, it scales multiplicatively. So this is gonna be stronger than the sum of its parts. And then we get to the second skill here where we get party crit damage for one turn. Remember I was talking about this during Royal Brand and Brilliant Summer where, hey, look, we actually have crit damage. We don't care about crit star absorption. We don't care about crit bomb even necessarily in a quick centric system because we definitely tend to have stars abound. So as a result of this crit damage is perfect in terms of pairing. It's not a whole lot. It's only up to 30%, but hey, it's still a nice addition here for this mystic code. And then our third skill here gets us that 10% charge yet again, as well as removing one ally's ailment debuff. So again, you can get rid of some of the annoying chip damage, but you're also gonna get that charge to get to the NP here even faster, or maybe to make up for sort of a unit's deficiency in being able to loot. So this is why I find Chaldea Pathfinder to be a very nice one if we're in the right set of circumstances. Now, it's not hard to level just like a bunch of the other ones we've talked about. So again, do you want to prioritize this? I would probably prioritize it over something like Royal Brand or Brilliant Summer, 
but it doesn't need to be high up on the list unless you're maybe more quick focused at the moment in your account. Here we have Halloween Royalty. It's our newest event mystic code. And this one is very nice in terms of what it does. If you guys saw there the prior one dealing with quick, this is sort of going to be our buster version of it. It is not been added to the rare prism shop it hasn't had a rerun yet so jp you guys can still have another crack at this potentially into the future if you've missed it and a this is still a little bit of ways into the future before you get access to this so the first skill here is again another mixed single target steroid of buster and np damage for one turn and this one's especially nice when we start thinking about oberon because not only do we get the np damage that he scales off of but we also get more buster so this is gonna be perfect for comps that use him and prioritize him even though we could use oberon and other non-buster comps It'd be very powerful for damage the second skill here is going to be invincibility for two attacks for one turn. So while this isn't the one turn duration, we still at least get multiple attacks. So it saves us from that, oh crap, it only lasts one attack sort of deal. Again, though, it is only one turn duration. So that's the thing we gotta be careful about is making sure we use it on the right turn. But that's the way a lot of the other mystic codes are. So we don't have to worry about that. And then our third skill here is a chance to remove any sort of immobility debuffs, and that's going to include stuff like stun and charm. It's also gonna remove NP seal and skill seal. So basically everything that's going to lock your unit down and make them unable to use their skills or NP the way that they want to. This is very nice in that regard, and we still get the 10% charge that maybe allows us to make up for the lack of charge in some other unit, or again, perhaps the inability to reach the NP fast enough for our taste. So that's why I find Halloween Royalty to be a very good one. If you guys are buster centric at the moment and you happen to have your hands on this, I highly recommend making this very high up in your priority two levels so that you get more offensive firepower there, even though we maybe don't need it depending on our setup. So again, that is the good part about buster comps right now in JP is they're hitting very hard. And this one's gonna be our last mystic code of the video. Again, it's the most recent one released to date. It's called Decisive Battle Chaldea Uniform, but this is known as, again, Arctic plug suit or Neo plug suit. This is our new plug suit version, sort of how Arctic was an improvement to the old OG mystic code. Now we have our improvement to the old plug suit. So that makes it a very welcome addition to the game to people that had been stuck using plug suit, especially for like 90 plus nodes and things like that for a long time, just sitting there with it at rank 10, sort of wasting their mystic code experience. Now they got another newer mystic code to level. What's the problem with that? Well, it's the other one that's tied with Arctic for being the most expensive in the game to level in terms of experience requirements and you don't get it until you've completed the Tunguska epilogue, which happens after LB6. So this is very deep into the story for us, meaning we're not going to acquire this anytime soon if we're a newer account. You can certainly blitz to it, but either way, because of the length of time that it takes to level up, I wouldn't make it your priority. And in some ways, it's better than the OG plug suit. In other ways, it maybe loses some luster in the same way that Arctic did. Let's go ahead and talk about it. We get a party-wide mixed steroid again, so multiplicative scaling, woohoo. But we get attack and NP damage up here of 20%, so it's already just stronger than the 30% attack up that we got on plug. However, it is a little bit more NP damage specific, but it will scale better with, again, say, someone like Oberon who can boost NP damage. Our frontline recovery is our second skill here, and this is sort of where the trade-off occurs to me, just talking about this. So you guys will remember the OG plug suit had Gander, and Gander was a very effective survival tool for being able to stall out your enemies until your cooldowns came back, or just again to prevent them from doing something on the wrong turn that you didn't want them to. We've lost that. Now instead we get a decent heal with the ability to remove offensive debuffs, which is still very nice. Again, maybe we end up in some sort of weird raid scenario or 90 plus scenario with debuffs. And this allows us to sort of negate anything that's trying to limit our offensive capability. But yes, we've lost that ability to prevent the enemy from doing anything. So this one's a little bit more self-focused as rather than being enemy focused. So it's just a trade-off. You get some benefit, but you also lose some benefit. 
And then our third skill here is going to be the same old order change. They didn't improve it in any way. And to be honest, they didn't need to. Order change is already one of the most powerful tools in the game. If you guys listened to my portion earlier in the video on Plug Suit, you know that we referred to it as the most powerful offensive buff in the game because of the way order change works. Remember, this is allowing you to change one unit in your front line with one unit in your back line, which is going to bring them in and all of their skills and kit with them. So you get access to three more skills thanks to order change. You lose one off the Mystic Code, but you gain three. And as a result of that, not only do you get the firepower, support, or utility that that unit brings, but you also still have the attack up on the first skill there that's really going to be a nice steroid for you. So again, I do find Decisive Battle Chaldea Uniform to be a fantastic Mystic Code. It's just acquired so late in the game at this point and takes so long to level that it absolutely shouldn't be your priority. Plus, remember the way that Plug Suit works, you're going to be kind of forced to use things that have order change on it from time to time due to their utility and allowing you to clear stuff efficiently. So it does not need to be a priority for you. Again, I hope you found this video informative. Let me know what you guys would like to see for a Mystic Code in the comments below. I'd be curious to hear your ideas. I've definitely seen people list things like a Taunt Mystic Code or something like that that could be pretty cool. If you guys haven't ever checked me out on Twitch where I stream weeknights at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, I always start out with FGO. And feel free to join the Discord or follow me on Twitter as well. We've got a great community. There always happy to help you guys out and even join your friends list from time to time. I'll see you guys for the next one. Stay classy.